right, we're getting really close to the end of the book of Revelation. I've enjoyed the, the study both here and in Iola. The last few uh, sermons in Iola have been the same that I've done here. It's just hard uh, to, it's been hard to break them up as we're getting towards the end. After Armageddon and everything, it's kind of like, uh, I, I just kind of want everybody to be on the same page. i got to be honest, it's been easier for me, though, to preach the same message in <laughs> both places than coming up with something fresh. Uh, but we're in chapter 20. Great. I've been looking forward to this. This is a great uh, chapter that speaks about the resurrection and uh, actually two resurrections, but we'll get to that in a minute. Now, this is a subject that has confused a lot of people uh, throughout history, still a lot of people confused. Uh, and I don't pretend like I got everything 100%, but I can look at the Bible and, and uh, get a pretty good idea, I think, of what it's saying. But you all know that the idea of resurrection just simply means to rise again. Okay, you got the re, which is uh, again, and then the Latin word there, I can't remember, surgi, sur, surgi, something like that. It means rise, whatever it is, <laughs> okay, resurge. And uh, it means to rise again. Now, the Christian faith is based off of the resurrection. I mean, if you think about it, like historically, this was what Christians were known for as people that believed in the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Nobody was denying that there was a man named Jesus that roamed on the earth or that they claimed that he did miracles. Or they claimed he was a prophet. They, named he, they claimed that he did all these things. But what the big uh, holdup was, what the Romans and, and those after that were persecuting Christians for, is that they were believing that this man was more than just a man, and he was God, and that he rose from the dead and all this, and they didn't like that. So the resurrection of Jesus Christ is key to the belief, uh, uh, to, to our faith. Okay, look at, you guys are familiar with this. Let's just quote it. Romans 10, 9 and 10 says, uh, for with, uh, uh, well, maybe we need to, need to go there. Uh, for Romans 10, 9 and 10, uh, if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in thy heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. See, I said, you believe in your heart that God hath raised him from the dead. That's part of it, right? Uh, and so if somebody said, well, I just don't believe in the resurrection. Sorry, no salvation. <laughs> That's kind of part of the deal. This is Jesus Christ and uh, uh, what he did, not just his death, but his body resurrection. Look at 1 Corinthians 15. 1 Corinthians 15. This is the place if you want to explain to somebody what the gospel is. I think we would all agree this is the passage that we would go to. Let's read the first eight verses here. It says, Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand, by which also ye are saved, if ye keep in memory what I preached to you, unless you have believed in vain. For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the Scripture, that He was buried, and that He rose again the third day according to the Scripture, and that He was seen of Cephas, then of the twelve. After that, He was seen of above five hundred brethren at once, of whom the greater part remain unto the present, this present, but some are fallen asleep. After that, He was seen of James, then of all the apostles, and last of all, He was seen of me, also as of one born out of due time, Paul says. Okay, and so uh, go over to ch verse 12. Now, if Christ be preached that he rose from the dead, how say some among you that there is no resurrection of the dead? But if there be no resurrection of the dead, then is Christ not risen? And if Christ be not risen, then is our preaching in vain, and your faith is also in vain? Yea, and we are found false witnesses of God, because we have testified of God, that he raised up Christ, whom he raised not up, if so be that he raised not, uh, he, the, uh, the dead rise not. For if the dead rise not, then is not Christ raised. And if Christ be not raised, your faith is vain, ye are yet in your sins. Yeah. Then they also, which are fallen asleep in Christ, are perished. If in this life only we have hope in Christ, we are of all men most miserable. But now it's risen from the dead and become the first friend slept that you understand that there is a resurrection that Jesus Christ rose from the dead but then his resurrection he was the first fruits which means there's going to be another resurrection okay so this is very uh, very important 
Now, what we say as, uh, as Christians, particularly Baptists, I don't know if you've ever seen the Baptist flag. Uh, the Baptist flag, I know it sounds funny. Well, they, I didn't know the Baptists had a flag. Well, there is. They made a flag up that says, the, uh, let's see, the book, the blood, and the blessed hope. And uh, you'll see that it's a, it's a white and red flag. Uh, I don't, I'm not big on f- flying any flags in church, but the, that's the Baptist flag, if you will. The book, the blood, the blessed hope. Now, that's something to, you know, that's something to hang up. I mean, as far as if we're going to stand for something, we want to stand for those things. Well, what is that blessed hope? That's an important part of that whole deal is the blessed hope. And that blessed hope is, uh, you know, I've heard some people say that, you know, that's the reason that they don't like uh, somebody not being pre-trib because, oh, you don't have a blessed hope. Of course I have a blessed hope. Christ is coming again. There's a resurrection of the dead. That's the blessed hope, okay? And so look at first uh, uh, Titus. I mean, not first Titus. First, look at Titus, and then we'll look at first Thessalonians. Titus, chapter 2. The blessed hope of the believer is that we too will be resurrected. We preach is resurrected. We too will be resurrected. Verse 11. For the grace of God that bringeth salvation hath appeared to all men, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lust, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world, looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior. Jesus Christ. Look over at uh, 1 Thessalonians. Four. Something that we, uh, that's often preached at funerals. We like to go to this uh, to this portion of scripture. But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep that ye sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and then, even so them also will God bring with him. For this we say unto you, Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord. For the Lord himself shall be seen. First, then we which are alive and remain together with them in the cloud. Comfort one another with these words. And so that's our blessed hope that we will be resurrected again, that our loved ones who've gone before us who have, who were saved will be resurrected again. Okay, so this is uh, the idea of what a resurrection is. You say resurrection, a lot of people just think, oh yeah, the resurrection of Christ. Well, no, the resurrection has to do more with the resurrection of the dead in general. I mean, obviously he did raise from the dead, but when we say the resurrection, we're talking about a time when we, all all humans actually, I'll get to that in a second, rise again. Remember, that's what the word means. We rise again. So our bodies will go into the grave, but they'll rise again. And this is a a difficult situation for some people to understand. But I'm going to try to illustrate that this afternoon with a very crude drawing. Not crude in the, I mean, not a great drawing, (laughs) okay? So let me give this little uh, line. This would be a timeline of events, okay? And uh, we'll put a person here. I'm doing a stick figure just because it's easier. All right, so this is a person. He's alive. He's got a long neck, (laughs) okay? He's alive. And uh, and so the very first thing we see, number one, is this, that the dead first is the death. Oh, sorry, let me say it again. We have what's called the first death is what I mean to be saying. And the now everybody believes you're going to die. I mean, there are people that are trying to seek immortality and they're hoping that we'll get to a place, one point, where we can just download our thoughts into a computer. No, everybody's going to die. We know that throughout history. And uh, it's, it's so bizarre to hear people say uh, that they lost faith in God because a loved one that they had passed away and they were praying that God would heal them and they didn't heal them. And so they died and they said, well, there must not be a God. And I'm thinking, you know, as good as we do, everybody's going to die. 
everybody's going to die. Now, the, the question is why. You can seek that. You can try to figure out why people die. But just to say, like, well, I don't like it. So, no sense, okay? Everybody's going to die. Look at Hebrews chapter 9. Everybody has an appointment with death. Hebrews 9, 27. And as it is appointed unto men once to die... But after this, the judgment. Now, I'm going to read the next verse later. But uh, it's appointed unto men once to die, and after this, the judgment. So the first point I want to make is that there's the first death and the resurrection unto judgment. Okay? Now, you have the first death. So this person, you know, perishes in this, in this earth. Man, I thought I grabbed the better marker. Let me just switch to red. Or is that is that bigger one good? Okay. I thought the smaller ones were better. All right, so now this man is dead. There's his arms folded. He's going like this. Okay, anyway. <laughs> so this is... The first death. Okay? And we understand we've all, it's appointed in a man. Every man is going to die. We understand that. Okay? Now, someday there is what we call a resurrection. And this is going to be my next point, is that there is a resurrection unto judgment. Okay, so there's a resurrection, and then here's the judgment unto eternal life. Okay, or eternal, we'll just make a fire here, uh, eternal death or damnation. Okay, you know, my handwriting's bad enough as it is. Okay, so you've got your first death, and then you've got the resurrection. I'll write that in there. Now, after the judgment, you have eternal life or you have eternal death. And now here's the interesting thing. All the Jews knew about the resurrection. Now, there was a, was a group of people we'll talk about here in a minute, the, uh, uh, the Sadducees. Well, let's go ahead and look at that. Luke, Luke chapter 20. And verse 27. Then came to him certain of the Sadducees, which deny there is any resurrection. And they asked him, saying, Master, they're uh, trying to trip him up. All these guys were always trying to trip up Jesus. And they said, Master, Moses wrote unto us, If any man's brother die having a wife, and he die without children, that his brother should take his wife and raise up seed unto his brother. There were therefore seven brothers, and the first took a wife and died without children. And the second died childless. You understand where he's going with this. The guy has all these wives. They all die, and he says, in the resurrection, whose wife is that going to be? Okay, and so there was this idea of a resurrection being taught. There was only one group, the Sadducees, among the Jews who just didn't believe this. Everybody else understood that there was a resurrection. Go back to Job. Early on in history... Believers recognized that there was going to be a resurrection. Job chapter 19, verse 25. I love this, this verse. Job says this, uh, and, it's, and it's very prophetic. He says, For I know that my Redeemer liveth, and that he shall stand at the latter day upon the earth. And though after my skin... Worms destroy this body, yet in my flesh shall I see God. 
So the, he's not just talking about a spiritual resurrection. And let me, let me, here's why I say this. Later on, I'm going to talk about the millennium because that's in our passage there in, in Revelation 20. Uh, there are those who deny the resurrection in the sense that they believe everything about the millennium and about the, uh, the end of Revelation here is just spiritual. Okay, it's called amillennialist, and it's actually a pretty big deal. A lot of people are kind of going back to that. This is something that was taught early on in church history, primarily by the Catholics, and then some in the Protestant Reformation held on to that teaching, amillennialism, and a lot of uh, what we would call Reformed theology. Well, guess what? A lot of Baptists are going back, and they're revisiting some of those teachings and there's a lot of Baptists that are becoming what they call primitive Baptists or, or uh, Reformed Baptists. And they're teaching a lot of the same, uh, same things. So there is a group of people, it's kind of a rising group of Baptists who are going back to all millennialism. Okay, and all millennialism, I'll, I'll get to that here in a little bit. But basically, what they say is that this resurrection, you know, is uh, a spiritual res resurrection being being saved basically now they i think they do teach a second resurrection but that's another story so what we see here is that early on even job is saying hey my flesh is going to die worms are going to eat this this body but uh he says though my uh skin worms destroy in my flesh i will see god so even though he doesn't understand it maybe how it all works and we might not understand it completely today we understand that he was saying that I will physically one day be resurrected. That's early on. Job was written early on in, in, in history. Uh, this was not like right before Christ or some new teaching that happened at the time of Christ or something like this. This was something that everybody understood. Look at John 11. To some degree, they understood that there was a resurrection. John 11. This is a famous passage of scripture where Lazarus is uh, is he experiences a resurrection, okay, of of the body, <clears throat> and so uh, which ends up being again another prophetic uh, lesson that Jesus is able to teach. But in John chapter eleven, verse twenty three, uh, Jesus is talking to Martha, and she says, "If thou hast been here, my brother had not died." But I know that even now, whatsoever thou wilt ask of God, God will give it to thee. Verse 23, Jesus said unto her, Thy brother shall rise again. Martha said unto him, I know that he shall rise again in the resurrection at the last day. And Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die, believest thou this. But you see, there, there was this understanding. There's going to be a resurrection. People didn't even understand, even believers, even those who follow Jesus, didn't understand about his death, burial, resurrection that was going to happen. To, to, they didn't completely understand it. You know, they were trusting in him that he was the Messiah. They were trusting in him uh, that there's going to be a kingdom, there's going to be a resurrection, all these things, but they didn't completely understand it. But still, there was understanding that there would be, after, this, after the first death, at some point in history, there would be a resurrection. And in that resurrection there would be a judgment. Now, most Jews assumed because they were Jews that they are automatically in the resurrection, it would be like the, the kingdom and they're just automatically saved. And of course, John the Baptist says, hey, say not unto yourself, I have Abraham as my father. I could raise up uh, from this stone sons of Abraham, right? Seed of Abraham. And so, he's, so a lot of people were relying on their blood to get them into eternal, to get them eternal life. Unfortunately, there's a lot of people today that do that. You know, you ask somebody about their salvation, and they'll be like, oh, yeah, my grandpa was a Baptist preacher or something like that. Whoa, whoa, that doesn't pass down. It's not hereditary, you know. Uh, so, But people misunderstand that. But what they did know is that there's going to be a resurrection. There's going to be a time where we rise again. There's going to be a time where there's a judgment. They just assume their judgment was going to be unto eternal life and that everybody else you know, all the other nations and what have you would be destroyed. All their enemies would be destroyed and they would go uh, to hell. This is partly why people didn't like the gospel that Jesus was preaching because they're like, whoa, whoa, you're giving, you know, you're, and then the apostles especially, you're giving the Gentiles and all these people, you know, the opportunity to have this grace and, and uh, have eternal life. 
But there's a death and the resurrection unto judgment. After that judgment, uh, which we call the great white throne, go back to our text in uh, Revelation 20. Verse 27. Uh, let me see here. What did I say? Oh, uh, verse 11. And it says, And I saw a great white throne, and him that sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away, and there was found no place for them, and I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God, and the books were open, and another book was open, which is the book of life, and the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it, and death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them, and they were judged every man according to their works, and death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. Okay? So we see this is the second death. First death second death then we have the resurrection now something uh something interesting happened obviously we know what jesus came for and what he did and uh so the third point i want to bring up is this there enters into the scene another resurrection okay There's the resurrection of Christ, but then we understand that one day there will be a rapture. Not important where that fits in into history, really. But we just know one day it's coming, and this is the resurrection. Let me use red again. Okay, so here's the deal. All those who trusted in Christ on, the, on this resurrection... They go straight into eternal life. All right? This is called now the first resurrection. And this resurrection that everybody's been anticipating through all, all church history, all history, is the second resurrection. All right? So uh, let's talk about that for a second. Uh, Hebrews chapter 9 again. We read, the, we read uh, verse 27 earlier. Hebrews, 20, uh, Hebrews 11. And I'll read uh, 27 again. Hebrews 11, 27. Uh, no, what was I? What, uh, nine. Did I? Good grief. Nine, 27. And as it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this the judgment. Now let's keep reading. Verse 28. So Christ was once offered to bear the sins of many, and unto them that look for him shall he appear the second time without sin unto salvation. This is talking about uh, whenever he comes back, right, he is going to be able to take us uh, in that resurrection. Now let's go back to Revelation. So, if this is the case, what I, I've left out something from this whole picture, right? I've le anybody want to guess what I've left out? We've got the resurrection, yeah, eternal life. We've got the second, uh, we've got the judgment, great white throne judgment. Will anybody, go, will anybody make it here if they're judged according to their works? No. So what we read in the end of Revelation 20 is death and hell cast into the lake of fire. Okay. So obviously we got this. This is where, where we want to go. But I'm leaving out an important part in, in this uh, chronology. Judgment seat, uh, judgment seat of Christ. That's true. I left that out. <laughs> that's not what I'm talking about, though. Imperative, uh, important to this uh, text here in chapter 20. The millennial reign. So what about the millennial reign? Where is that? Okay, somewhere between that resurrection and this resurrection is the millennium. 
Now, here is the interesting thing. That's a thousand year physical reign on earth. Now, I mentioned earlier about amillennialism, and uh, here's the interesting thing. Amillennialists believe, they don't believe, excuse me, that there's no uh, millennial thousand year reign. <clears throat> that would actually be the, the wrong way to say it. What they, they believe that there is a millennium, but they believe that the millennium is spiritual. And that it just happens between this time and this time. It's just, it's just like everything that you read in Revelation about that time period is just spiritual. All right? It's talking about Christ is reigning, and this is the kingdom, the kingdoms on earth. kingdom. And I agree that right now the kingdom of God is in us. Right? We're, not on the physical, we're not in the physical millennial kingdom, but the kingdom of God is in us. And that will be from here on out. Okay? But what is strange about this amillennial view, the, the way that I understand it, the way that I've heard it taught, is that they believe that the thousand years is symbolic. But they believe that uh, the physical kingdom, right? They, they believe the physical kingdom, uh, I'm sorry, they don't believe in a literal thousand years, but they believe on the reign of Christ is symbolic. Whereas we believe, or I should say premillennialists believe, that the thousand years is literal. There's a thousand year reign, literal time period that's coming that we exist in, but that the kingdom of God right now is spiritual. Does that make sense? So we, we believe in the spiritual aspect of the millennial kingdom. I mean, the not the millennial kingdom, the kingdom of God in us right now, but we believe in a physical reign, whereas they don't believe in a physical reign, but they believe that everything... Uh, the kingdom is, is spiritual. So let's look back at, at Revelation 20. And read the first part. Now with all that being said, and hopefully you can understand what the two deaths are and the two resurrections are. And so now let's read what happens. And I saw an angel come down from heaven, having the key of the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand. And he laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil and Satan, and bound him a thousand years and cast him into the bottomless pit and shut him up and set a seal upon him that he should deceive the nations no more till the thousand years should be fulfilled. And after that, he must be loosed a little season. Now, I talked about this last week uh, where the, 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 the end judgment of who is already in the lake of fire. The beast and the false prophet already in the lake of fire. But then Satan is only going to be bound in the bottomless pit or what we would just call hell today. He's going to be bound uh, for a thousand years during this time period. This is, what, um, this is what I just read. And then it says in verse 4, And I saw thrones, and they sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus, and for the word of God, and which uh, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads or in their hands, and they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. Now, this verse gets kind of tricky to some people, okay? Look at this next verse. But the rest of the dead lived not until the thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. So there are some that say, look, the rest of the dead... You know, they didn't live. The only ones that lived were those who, uh, uh, who were beheaded and those who, you know, were a witness for, uh, for Christ. Uh, but really, that's, that's not what's going on. He's just talking about all these events that happened before time and all these uh, who went up in the resurrection. All these were spared from ever, you know, worshiping the beast or anything like that, okay? And so now... These are, you see, ruling and reigning with Christ there in verse 4. Okay, so it says, This is the first resurrection. Blessed and holy is he that hath part in the first resurrection. On such the second death hath no power. But they shall be priests of God and of Christ and shall reign with him a thousand years. Okay, so during this thousand years, all these people you know, are actually ruling and reigning with Christ. What that looks like, how that actually happens, that's another message, okay? And I'll talk a little bit about the uh, new heaven and new earth and everything next week, Lord willing. 
But that's it, what's going on during that thousand years, which I fully believe is literal thousand year reign. And I believe actually what's going on, and this is uh, comparing some other uh, passages of Scripture that talk about the conditions there. You can go to Ezekiel and some other places that talk about the conditions very similar to the Garden of Eden. All right, so we're talking about if you believe Garden of Eden was literal, then you can believe that this is a literal place because things are being restored to that condition on earth. And we're ruling and reigning with Christ. Things are going as they should have gone. Right before the before the fall of man, obviously there's still some uh, some wickedness involved in, on the earth. We'll get to that next week. But then it says that he will be loosed uh, after that thousand year period, and he'll go out and deceive the nations and all that one final time. I'll talk about that uh, a little bit next week. But this is the idea of the two deaths and the two resurrections. So the best way to summarize this, and this is what I've this is the way I've heard it my whole life is put this way, if you want to put it all into a one Facebook post, <laughs> okay, here's, what it, here's how it goes. If you're only born once, you die twice. If you're born twice, you only die once. Okay, you see how that makes sense in here? You have to be, if you're going to uh, not have to worry about this second death, if you want to be void of having to go with this, this is what he said, blessed are they who, who are in the first resurrection, they don't have to see the second death, all right, because they went up in the first resurrection. You want to go up in the first resurrection, you have to have the second birth, okay? And this is exactly why we talk about being born again, all right, being regenerated. You know, symbolically, in this case, I'm not teaching all millennialism here, but symbolically, when we get saved, uh, we are born again. That's a type of resurrection. That's why in uh, Romans 6, it says, hey, you're resurrected with Christ, Okay, and so uh, so that's the type of resurrection. But we know from Job and Matthew and John, I mean, all these places we looked at up into Revelation, that there's also a physical resurrection of the body. And uh, then then that will be the final judgment, great right throne. We don't have to worry about that. We don't have to worry about the second death because we have been born again. I mean, that's what we got to. Uh, that's why we go preach the gospel, try to get people saved. Let's pray. Father, thank you for. Uh, the resurrection of Jesus Christ, that we might have uh, that and, and faith in that and, and to be reminded of the fact that one day we too will rise again. And I pray, Lord, that you'll help us uh, uh, for this short time that we're here on this earth to do the work that you've called us to do and to be focused on Jesus and looking uh, forward to the author and finisher of our faith and uh, help us, Lord, uh, to lay up treasures in heaven and look forward to the day we'll rule and reign with you. Uh, for a thousand years and uh, the millennial kingdom and then all through eternal eternal uh, life. I thank you, Lord, that we don't have to taste of that second death. Help us realize how serious that is of a matter and to uh, make sure that our loved ones are saved and, uh, and our neighbors and those who we meet and uh, help us to be motivated to go uh, soul winning and reach people for, for you, Lord. I pray in Jesus' name.